You ever wonder why you wake up one morning and there's some economic stat out, suddenly the bond market tanks or goes up and you see the stock market move in lockstep? Now comes the important relationship between bonds and stocks. And John, this has got to be the mother of all relationships when it comes to these markets. Absolutely, Ted. If you're trading stocks or you're analyzing stocks or whatever, it's very important to recognize that what happens in the bond market, which is really interest rates, has a dramatic influence on the stock market. And in fact, very often, the bond market acts as a leading indicator for the stock market. So if you're watching stocks, yes, you should watch the Dow Jones Industrial Average and all of that, but you should also keep an eye on what bond prices are doing. Let's go back 20 years and prove your message that rising bond prices are good for stock prices. And the whole reason we're going back 20 years, that's roughly how long we've been in this incredible bull market in stocks. And the whole point of this chart is simply to show that bonds and stocks generally move in the same direction. Uh, in fact, uh, you can see that in 1981, 1982, that's when, uh, in fact, it's interesting, bonds bottomed in 1981, stocks bottomed in 1982. We'll come back to that in a second. But generally speaking, ever since then, you'll notice that we've had a major bull market in bonds and a major bull market in stocks. The thing about that 1981, 1982 that we're just going to mention that, that not only do they tend to move in the, in the same direction, but when the bond market does turn, it tends to turn a little bit ahead of stocks. For example, bonds bottomed in 1981. That's the uh, solid line. Uh, the bar chart there, that is the stock market, the S&P, bottomed about a year later. That also shows one of the tendencies here that the bond market, when it does turn, tends to turn anywhere from six months to a year ahead of the stock market. What I like about you, John, is you're like a lawyer who can come into a courtroom and show precedent-setting cases and win every time. We're going to take a look at another chart here, which makes the point, uh, the last three declines in the stock market all presaged by drops in the bond market. Absolutely. That's the whole point of this chart. The solid line there, those are Treasury bond prices. We're going back to 1985. And the, uh, the bar charts there, that is a chart, monthly bar charts of the S&P 500. Now, you'll notice we've got four little boxes, three little boxes marked off there on the S&P. And they mark the last uh, three bear market years. First of all, uh, 1987, which was the big one, uh, 1990, and then a smaller one in 1994 where we had kind of a, a stealth bear market. But, but look at the line above it there. You notice that uh, this is the line of Treasury bond prices. We have little arrows there where sh which show when bond prices peaked. Uh, bond prices actually peaked in January of 1987, and they declined for six to seven months before the stock market actually declined. So that, that peak in bond, yield, uh, bond prices at the beginning of 1987 was an early warning of what was coming in 1987, that major decline in stocks. You'll notice that bond prices peaked in 1989, approximately one year before we had the sharp downturn in stocks. Uh, 1993, uh, bond prices peaked in the fall of 1993, about uh, four to five months later we had the beginning of a bear market year in stocks. So the point is here that it's not only important to keep an eye on what the bond market is doing, but bear in mind that if bond prices start to drop, that maybe anywhere from six months to a year after that, we generally have problems in the stock market. But only understand the next chart here, because uh, this freight train of a bull market, it would appear, has had somewhat of a decoupling, at least in the early part of 1999. This is something we're very concerned about, Ted, and that's the whole point of this next chart. I mean, you're telling me that stocks go up and bonds go up, but I'm not looking at the bonds going up here. Well, it's important to recognize this. Yes, during 1999, it has been characterized by, I don't like the word decoupling, Ted, but it looks that way in the sense that stock prices have been going up, bond prices have been going down. That's the whole point of this chart. Uh, the bar chart there, that is uh, the S&P 500, and you can see since October of 1998, stocks have been rising that's the good news. The bad news is that bond prices have been dropping. Now, we mentioned that they really shouldn't be going in opposite directions. Uh, that's simply when bond prices are falling, that means interest rates are rising. But bear in mind that bond prices act as a leading indicator for stocks. So what this tells us is that this is a potentially negative sign for the stock market. If this trend continues, it's a big if, if Treasury bond prices continue to weaken through the balance of 1999, and interest rates continue to move higher, at some point, this could become a big negative for the stock market. Next chart, a five-year overlay, and it shows the uptrend in bond yields, perhaps, 
fleshing out this a little bit further, threatening this stock market rally that we've been seeing. Yes, it shows that we're reaching kind of a critical spot, Ted. Uh, this chart here shows the S&P 500, that's the solid line, and we're looking at it since 1994, because that's what most analysts uh, consider that to be the beginning of the last leg of this bull market, which has lasted about four years. And you can see that uh, that rally in the S&P coincided roughly with a peak in bond yields. And bond yields, of course, have been dropping ever since then. Now, if you look to the far right of the chart, you'll notice that bond yields have been moving up from roughly 5% to 6%. That coincides with the downturn in bond prices that we just looked at. We simply drew a downtrend line across the peaks of those yields, uh, 1994, 1997 peaks, and you can see that bond yields roughly around, a little bit above 6%, is, are testing a very significant downtrend line, and we're keeping a very close eye on that. If bond yields were to move above that line, and we're talking probably about a move above six and a quarter, if that were to happen, at least on a technical basis, that would seem to suggest that bond yields have really turned the corner are now in a major new uptrend. And I think if that were to happen, that would probably have a much more negative impact on the stock market. This is all well and good, but there's always an exception to every rule, isn't there? In the, yes, in there this is. In this next chart, we're going to see that, and it's all about a deflation scare. Well, everything we've been talking about so far, Ted, uh, we, you know, falling commodity prices, rising bond prices, that's generally good for the stock market. That generally holds true in what we call a disinflationary environment. There is one instance, however, where those inter interrelationships do change, and that is in a deflationary environment. Now, this is very rare. Just for those who might not quite understand, what do we mean by deflation? Well, deflationary it means that... Slowing of inflation or actual reduction in prices? Actually, reduction okay. in prices. Now, we haven't seen that since the 1920s, and we know what happened in 1929. However, in 1998, we did have a deflationary scare, which again started in Asia. You may recall we had all those currency problems in Asia. The Asian markets collapsed. Devaluations, collapse. yeah. Devaluations. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But that, and commodity prices like the CRB hit a 20-year low. So for the first time in a generation, people were actually talking deflation. And what happens in that instance, that's normally very bullish for bond prices because when commodities go down, bonds go up. However, it's negative for the stock market, and that's what changes. Rising bond prices... Uh, become negative for stocks in a deflation. So well, I guess what I'm saying is in a deflationary environment, bonds and stocks actually decouple. And you end up with bonds doing better because of the absence of an inflationary threat, but stocks do not move along in lockstep with yeah. bonds. Yeah, yeah. and that, that, that's the whole point of this chart is simply to show that during the second half of 1998, if you can look at the, the solid line, that's bond prices, uh, starting right around July of uh, 1998, notice that tremendous surge in bond prices. At the same time, notice a collapse in stock prices. That was during this deflationary period. Uh, the only asset class that really does well in a deflation, obviously, are bond prices because interest rates are collapsing. And you'll notice that during that deflationary scare, we saw a flight to quality all around the globe. Mm -hmm. Money came out of stock markets and went into the bond market. But you can also see that in October of the, the end of last year, 1998, that whole situation reversed. The Federal Reserve actually stepped in, lowered interest rates very aggressively. That kind of saved the day. And you'll notice that in October of last year, the stock market bottomed and the bond market peaked. So we had a decoupling, and that lasted for a while. Uh, but however, once that, pa uh, that scare passed, mm -hmm. we've now moved back into a more normal relationship. And when we come back, we're going to take a look at the commodity bond ratio, another interesting relationship, which will give you some specific pointers on how that ratio affects individual sectors in the stock market. Let's review the relationship of bonds versus stocks. A strong bond market is generally good for stocks. A weak bond market is generally bad for stocks. The bond market tends to turn before stocks and as a result is a leading indicator for the stock market. However, at times there are long lead times between those two turning points. In other words, the bond market can turn down, for example, six months to a year before the stock market turns down. Rate-sensitive stocks, those are stocks that are very sensitive to the bond market, also tend to turn before the rest of the stock market and are also considered leading indicators. Now, there is one exception to this relationship between bonds and stocks, and that occurs during a deflation. Now, deflationary periods are relatively rare in the markets, although we did see one during the second half of 1998. During a deflation, bond prices tend to go up 
and stock prices tend to go down. So in a deflation, bonds and stocks do decouple. However, that situation is relatively rare and is an exception to the general rule.